what's going on everyone welcome back in today's quick sensor tutorial i'll be showing you how to connect the bh1750 light intensity measurement module with a raspberry pi pico or pico w in MicroPython. for those of you guys who don't know this is just a very simple module that measures light intensity or ambient light in a unit called lux which is lumens per meter squared that's just a really fancy way of saying it measures the intensity of light in the room essentially and just some examples of what lux is just to give you some background of objects that emit lux obviously sunlight so the sunlight alone at a maximum releases about a hundred thousand units of lux and we can see other common releases of light here so skylight alone is about sixteen thousand units of lux and of course we have moonlight starlight which are very low lux so the lower intensity light emitted from an object the lower lux it releases essentially and that's what we're measuring with this simple sensor so some applications of the BH1750 include uh, greenhouse management. So typically in a greenhouse, you want to know the level of light to control the light to be sure that the plants are healthy in the greenhouse. Another thing is just ambient light control in general. So if you want to control the light in a room automatically, you want to know the level of lux in the rooms to be able to know when to turn on and off lights. And of course, many other applications where you want to do some smart control of lights. So enough being said, now that you guys have some background on the sensor, we're going to get started. Okay, so first things first, we just want to physically connect the sensor to our Raspberry Pi Pico W using four jumper wires, two for VCC and ground, that is managing power on the device. And secondly, we want two jumper wires for SCL and SDA pins. We can just make the same connections that you have with the wires, the same as you see in this diagram. Of course, be sure not to mix up the VCC and the ground pins because that can cause issues damaging the sensor or the Raspberry Pi Pico W if you mess up the ground and the power. And here we have SCL and SDA, and those are characteristic of I squared C communication, which is probably the most common communication protocol for such devices to actually measure the signal from the BH1750. So if you are new to this space, you will be seeing these SCL and SDA pins and connections very often. And so once you have those four connections, also another thing you could do is you can plug this into a breadboard to keep everything more clean and organized. Really, you don't have to if both the BH1750 are soldered and the Raspberry Pi Pico W are soldered properly, you can just connect them directly. But I'm just showing you here in a breadboard and it's commonly good practice to use a breadboard to keep everything stationary and not moving for your project. So now that we have that, we can jump into the MicroPython code and a library we need to actually get values from the sensor now that our device is connected and our Raspberry Pi Pico W is plugged in. Okay, so now that we have our physical setup, we could just jump to our Thani environment where we will be coding our MicroPython code on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Really, you can use any environment you want. And as a prerequisite, I'm just going to assume you have some IDE where you're able to connect to the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W and create a Python script and manage code on the device. Thani is probably the most popular editor for this device. And we're not going to go into the setup for this video. You can find many tutorials online of how to get set up with MicroPython and Thani with the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W. So now that we're in there, we can just create our file. I already have a file here and you could just copy the contents of this file essentially. And you can name it whatever you want. This is just the file where we are going to use the third party library, which I'll show you how to get in a second and use that BH1750 to get measurement values every second in this code. So in order to get this library, what you want to do, it's a third party library. So we can just go to GitHub. First of all, we just want to search on Google Pico BH1750, and you'll see this link right away, github.com, and it's by this person, F-L-R-R-T-H. This person makes amazing libraries for such devices, really simple and easy to use. So I just wanna say shout out to this person, and I wanna give credit to them because I did not code this library. It's just a third-party library that allows us to easily get values from the BH1750. So once you're on this page, what we want to do is we just want to go to this BH1750 folder, go into that, and we want to download this bh1750.py file. Really simple library, it's just one file that does all the magic for us to allow us to get the, the looks from the device. So we can just go ahead and download the raw file. I already downloaded it. And once you have it downloaded, we just want to move the file from our local computer to the device in order for the Raspberry Pi Pico to be able to use this library in the code. Otherwise, we'll get some import errors. So if you want to move a library from your device to your Raspberry Pi Pico, what you could do in Thani is you could just go to the left here and you can navigate to where the file is on your local computer. In my case, it's on downloads. And we just want to move that to our directory. A good convention is to move it into your lib folder, which is where the Raspberry Pi Pico automatically saves third-party libraries. 
So you could just move it into the lib folder by navigating into the lib folder. And once we're navigated to the lib folder and we're navigated to where the, where the file is on our local computer, we could just go ahead and click these three dots or these three lines on top of each other and then select upload to lib, which I already did, but I'm just going to click it again. And that allows us to easily transfer files from our local computer to our Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W. If you didn't have a lib folder, you could just go ahead and create one here if you didn't have one. You'll probably have one if you have been using this device for a long time. So you could just do new directory and create a lib folder and then go into that. So now that we have our library and we have our code, we could just go ahead and run this code. But before we do at a high level, this code, as you could see, is really simple. We're just using the machine library to create an I squared C communication object right here. So that's what we use the machine library for. It's a native MicroPython library, so you don't have to download anything for that. We use the uTime library to import sleep, which allows us to manage time intervals between our readings. So we just want to take a reading every second. And finally, we have that third party library, which allows us to create that BH1750 object, pass it in the I squared C communication and the I squared C address of our BH1750, and that will allow us to get measurements every interval. So if you have everything set up properly, you have your device plugged in and it's connected and everything is good to go and you have this library, we should be able to run this code and start seeing Lux values. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, cool. And you could see I printed the devices just to make sure for a sanity check, we do have devices connected to our our Raspberry Pi Pico W. One thing you may notice is you may get an error at the beginning that's like ERI05. And what I notice is sometimes you can get this error. What you want to do in that case, first thing is you want to reset or unplug and plug your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W if you are getting some system level errors where it's not connecting to the device. Okay, so now that we have our code running, we could just do a quick sanity check on this device to make sure that it's working as expected. So I have it in front of me here, as you could see. So one thing we could do is just simply cover the device with our hand, and that should take the light or the lux to zero because no light is reaching the device. So that looks like it's working. Another thing we could do is simply shine light from our phone onto the BH1750 to show that the lux is increasing. So that makes sense. So that's another good check. We can see that it increased dramatically there. So obviously this thing is working and it's a pretty neat and simple device that you can use to create some cool DIY projects, especially for beginners. And we saw how incredibly easy it was to set up in this video. So really no loss and it's an incredibly affordable sensor as well. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, let me know once again, what applications you are using the sensor for. I would love to hear from you guys. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching and take it easy, everyone. I'll see you next time.